Hello, Leo. Welcome to your weekly tarot reading here on Dove and Serpent Tarot. This is for the week of February 26th through March 4th. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. Now, this uh, is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I'm providing, okay? Remember that the most important part of any tarot reading is you, and here we've got the Priestess card. That's a lovely card. Um, if there's anything that you need me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know in the comments, okay? I take that very seriously and I try to read every comment. So uh, definitely do that if you feel so inclined. So we've got our Dove and Serpent spread here and now we're going to do our mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card and hopefully this will you know tie the reading together and give us the confirmation that we need right at the very end okay um, so looking around here we've got this major arcana we've got some air some earth some fire um, we've got some more majors a lot of majors today and a little bit of water so it seems fairly balanced um, we're going to take a look through these cards one by one and see what might be kind of going on with you this week, okay? I feel like there is, um, there's almost like a mystery that you're trying to penetrate, okay? I feel like you're someone who is intensely practical and intensely, um, you're someone that believes in what they can see, believes in what they can taste, touch, smell. You know what I mean? You, you believe in the senses and you, um, you're very good at this kind of intuitively knowing how to not manipulate your environment or your surroundings, but you really know how to make things happen. You know, you're a, you're a manifester. You're someone that can um, take this kind of, um, take the idea and create something in the real world, right? The so-called real world of the senses. I feel like you are um, a very kind of goal-oriented person. You're very focused on what you're working to achieve on this plane in this life, okay? With that being said, I think you have an intensely, um, intensely active spiritual side, okay? Um, I think that you are always trying to improve not just the physical world through the the building of your um, building of your life and of your your business perhaps your family your um your your achievements right building your future i think that you're always trying to improve yourself improve your mind improve your emotional intelligence uh trying to improve your your physical health and well-being also okay with this high priestess card i feel like you're really trying to be as holistic as possible you know, you're trying to incorporate every aspect of your being and strengthen it and work toward improvement, work toward achievement, you know. Um, I feel that you you have this kind of, um, almost like this uh, this curse, kind of, of, of being too honest, right? I'm feeling, especially with this Priestess card, especially in the context of some of these other cards here, I feel like sometimes you're too honest with people, you know? Like, I feel like that's your... If we could fault you for anything, it's maybe that you're, you're too honest sometimes. Um, and I think that your honesty sometimes has gotten you into trouble. Um, it seems like you have a lot of character, a lot of integrity, a lot of, like, a, a personal set of principles and morals, right? And I think that leads you to just be intensely honest, even if it might put you at a disadvantage, you know, even if it might put you at a disadvantage. Uh, because I, I feel like that connection that you have with yourself, your principles, your spirit, soul, whatever you want to call it, I feel like that is important to you. I feel like that's kind of your, your priority. Um, Especially when it comes to business, because I think there's some situation going on now that is very much um, physical, maybe career or employment oriented, maybe financially related. 
Um, it could be a physical thing, but I'm I'm kind of getting more of a of a money vibe here. Okay, so I think that there's something going on that is maybe not um, maybe not a struggle at work or in your career or in your financial situation but just a challenge that you, you have to work through. There's no doubt about it that you're going to um, be victorious, that you're going to achieve this, that you're going to accomplish and overcome this difficulty. So I don't really want to call it like a challenge or a, an obstacle. It's just like something you got to do, you know? And what's really giving me that feeling, we'll come back to the high priestess, but what's really giving me that feeling is this seven of pentacles in the recent past okay i think that maybe you've started some new work or a, a business or you're involved in some some kind of project something related to the physical work right so maybe your employment it might be what you do for money i think that money hasn't quite been there yet um i think that there has been some kind of a hiccup i almost get this feeling like there's like the product has been recalled you know what i mean and that's a metaphor, obviously. I mean, it, it could be literal. Um, but it's almost as if you've done all of this work and then you realize ah, there was a mistake. We can't really sell this product. We can't accept the rewards that we're getting for this, this work that we've done. And we've got to fix this now. Okay. So there's been some kind of like either a design error or some kind of an execution error or accident or mistake and that's where this kind of you know the your leo honesty kind of comes into play where i think that maybe the average person would have just kind of pushed things through anyway but not you no you came forward and said look this is wrong this is a mistake we can't sell this we can't go forward we can't distribute this or whatever it is i don't know that it's an actual product but whatever is the, um, the product or service that you're, you're working on, right? Whatever your kind of, um, whatever your, your project is, um, you're the type of person to come forward immediately. I don't think there was much hesitation with this priestess energy to say, look, there's been something, uh, you know, something happened. There's been some mistake. There's been some uh, error in things and we, we're going to fix it. We're going to make it right. You know, and I think that's just kind of how you are. And back to the priestess energy, I feel like that really is um, gives you your sense of self, your sense of identity. It's like I, I feel like you really pride yourself on your your integrity, right, and and your character. I think part of this is the idea that you you know you do want other people to recognize you. You do want other people to well to like you right? And to kind of look at you as a bit of an example, you know, and not that it's not done in an arrogant way or this kind of selfish way or this, this need for, you know, for fame and recognition, but it comes out of this idea that you in some way want to be an inspiration to others. You know, like you feel like if you're doing the work on yourself, if you're improving yourself, if you're maintaining your personal set of standards, not what society tells you is is right or wrong, but your own personal code of ethics. If you can uphold that, other people will witness that and collectively we'll all improve, right? We'll all just kind of be raised up, right? So I think there's part uh, of that it, it going on here. And um, I think that this is really, it's, it's putting you at a financial disadvantage, to be quite, quite frank. Um, it feels like whatever you are working on, maybe it's just something you work for a larger company and your department made some kind of a mistake. Well, maybe the majority of people there just say, look, we don't need to say anything. Just we can, it'll be okay. Maybe this is your own business. Maybe this is something in your personal life too. I, I don't know exactly where this is manifesting, but I feel with this seven that it's something, something is malfunctioning right and that could be a mechanical thing it could be um, a relationship that is kind of malfunctioning right but there's something that you've been working on that is just and not through anyone's malicious intent or you know evil behavior it's just 
some accident, some kind of act of God, if you will, right? Just something happened and this isn't quite the product that you were intending. So using your kind of Leo, your, your upright kind of Leo energy, I think you're trying to correct this. And we do see that correction with the two of pentacles here in the kind of present tense situation. I think you're making the necessary changes. Now, this it could be something where you um, have to correct an element of your behavior. Maybe you just made a mistake with someone's in, in a relationship with some trust or, you know, some kind of a private matter. You realize that you've made a mistake. Now, we're using the analogy of this product, this mechanical device or something that you know, has a flaw and needs to be corrected. But we could be really talking more kind of internally, more abstractly, more psychologically. And whichever way this resonates, um, the correction is coming quickly. Like I said, it's not something that you're kind of hanging around with. You immediately stand up and say, there's been a mistake that was made and we're going to correct it. So with the two, I feel like you're, you're working to change whatever this flaw, whatever this mistake was, um, in order to not only to move forward with this project, career, relationship, but to be satisfied with yourself, you know, to correct whatever this issue was within you um, so that the, the same mistake doesn't, you know, come back again, right? So I feel like you're making the necessary adjustments, okay? And I feel like you really have a sense of urgency about it. This is the Eight of Wands. I feel like, um, I feel like in some way this, this is an issue that can't really wait. You know, I feel like this is something where um, a lot of other things depend on it. Does that make sense? Uh, I feel as if were you to wait and linger, or maybe if you were to kind of listen to other people, and the other people now, let me just say, it could be the other people in your department who are saying, let's just push it through. It could be the other parts of yourself, right? The other just kind of segments of your ego saying, just push it forward, right? But the central you, the central figure is saying, no, I'm gonna stand up, I'm gonna do what's right. I think there are a lot of, um, this has a, a real kind of ripple effect in your life, okay? I think were you to push this through, I think it would maybe lead to some short-term gains. You would profit from this in the right now. But down the road, I don't think that you would. You know, I think down the road it would end up causing more trouble than it's worth, okay? So we've got this real sense of urgency, this real... Um, this real kind of fiery, uh, you know, activity, you know, I wouldn't be surprised really if you have a, a if this is somehow related to like, um, a career in communication or something or broadcasting or podcasting or, um, some kind of, I, I feel like you're speaking publicly somewhere. You know what I mean? Something like that. It could be that you are, you know, uh, the head of the department and you're the one that has to give the, the presentation or something, right? But I feel like there's this, this public speaking kind of vibe going on. Does that make sense for you? Um, and so it is maybe something where this, you've got this, this thing coming up, this meeting or this presentation or whatever, and you don't have a lot of time to decide, well, am I going to just push this under the rug or am I going to come out with it and, and talk about it and and correct it and move forward with the, um, you know, with the, the, the truth and with this information. Uh, but I feel like you have such a strong connection with this priestess card. I don't feel like it's a debate for you. I feel just like you are in your life generally trying to do this work to increase yourself, right? To build yourself up in every way, to keep improving, to cre keep, to keep uh, rising higher. Okay, so I think this is just about a no-brainer for you, you know. Um, what we see at the top of the path of the dove is the four of swords. This is this is your um, kind of your leadership ability, I guess. This is you 
um, trying to resolve the um, the dissent from these other people, right? We're talking about other people in the department, perhaps, who are trying to say, "Look, let's just push it through. We don't, we can't redo all of this work. It's just, it's a disaster." You know, um, I think this is you trying to um, very professionally and courteously and fairly silence those people. You know, I think this is you trying to find a way that they can be on board with what you're doing. And this is also the way that we would, we would um, have this internal dialogue, right, with ourselves in order to rally all of our little fragmentary egos to rally behind this, our central uh, consciousness, right? Who you, you feel that you are um, more at the core, I guess. So this is, this is really trying to, um, you know, in some ways silence the naysayers, but not in a, an oppressive way, but trying to convince everyone to join your side kind of thing. Um, and this goes back to that kind of need for everyone to see you as an example, or to put it simply, you want everyone to like you, right? But this is in such a way where you are trying to very eloquently, I feel like, because I feel I still feel this communication vibe. I still feel like you're in some kind of a public speaking role somewhere. Um, you're trying to really use your your powers of communication to convince people to um, join you, right? And I think this is usually successful for you. I think with we, the other energy that we see here, I think you're, you're really good at this, right? I think you're really good at this. Um, you may be so good, in fact, that other people are kind of um, not taken off guard, but they're a little bit taken aback. They're a little bit maybe surprised at how how well you can perform these things, how well you can um, give these presentations, do this public speaking, um, how even in this kind of a, let's say this kind of mechanical failure or this, you know, product recall as we're calling it, even in the midst of this kind of disaster, right, this industry problem, you're still able to come out looking like, almost like a hero, you know? And that leads me to the future card, the immediate future, this fool energy. The, fuel, the fool is, I was going to say the fuel, the fuel of the fool is this um, kind of the spontaneity, really. And it's the spontaneity that's born of your continual work that you're doing, right? We said you're always trying to improve. And because of that work, you react in the moment in such a natural, spontaneous way, you don't even miss a beat. You don't skip a beat at all. There's no hesitation. It just completely flows. It's completely natural. And people think, now that's a real smooth person. That's just someone who rolls with the punches in such a way that you come out, again, looking like the hero. And the fool is the hero of our story, right? The story of the tarot, let's say. So the fool is that, um, you know, that fool that innocent kind of naive fool that just goes out wandering uh, into just countless scenarios, experiences, mishaps, gets into all sorts of trouble, kind of unwittingly, emerges at the other end the wise man, woman, person, not gender specific. Um, really takes that foolishness, transforms it into wisdom, you know. And so this is really your ability to do that in a practical sense, in the physical realm. Something that seems like a blunder, perhaps, or, you know, uh, kind of an innocent mistake, an accident, something that happened with the Seven of Pentacles. You're able to transform that into, uh, it's almost like people think this is what it was supposed to be all along. You know, even though it was a mistake, it needs to be fixed. People at the other on the other side of this are just, are happy about it. You know what I mean? It doesn't seem like an inconvenience. It doesn't seem like you've just kind of set this work back several months or whatever the case may be. It's just almost like, yes, this is exactly what we needed right now. Thank you. 
you know. Um, and this is really the combination of all of this energy has, has kind of built you into this person that can do this. And it may be something rather unconscious too, because some of these cards, especially the, the Eight of Wands here is down beneath the surface. The Priestess card is a rather unconscious influence on your life. It may not be something that you are actively, you know, trying to do, but it just seems, you know, like the fool of the story gets into all sorts of trouble and danger, but just somehow comes out the other side unscathed, looking like the hero, being celebrated. I'm almost wondering if we've got a, um, maybe a three of cups over here. So we're going to move over to the path of the serpent now, but I think this fool energy is really important here because this is in some ways, you know, you've done all of this intentional work on the kind of on the vertical axis of the path of the dove, right? With the four of swords, the eight of wands, the two of discs, you're always trying to improve and increase. And the priestess card is all about increase and growing and evolution. And you've done all the work consciously, but it still seems like in practice, in the real world, out in your daily life, you just kind of roll through it in such a natural way that it's just, it's almost beautiful to watch, right? Beautiful to watch. So moving over to the path of the serpent now, and I do just want to say that these cards are always correct. Um, sometimes as the interpreter, I might not always know how to kind of associate each of these cards to your exact circumstances. And that's why I ask you to connect directly with the cards, with the images and the energies. Use your own intuition, like I said, okay? And again, if there is anything that you need me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy to, please let me know in the comments, okay? Path of the Serpent, Emperor Energy, first card we come to. This is definitely your authority here. Um, so I, I do think that you're like the head of the you're the head of the department, the head of the family. You're the kind of leader of the pack in whatever group this is taking place in. We see a limited number of court cards. There's only one court card here. So I think there's maybe one particular person uh, specifically that we need to talk about. But I think that this emperor is kind of your need to then be respected. And again, this is kind of giving me that vibe that you do want to be liked, but not in this kind of needy, oh, I want everyone to like me. You know, I wish I was the popular kid. Not that energy, no. This is a respect. This is uh, a true admiration. And you don't do this work for the admiration, right? You're not just doing it for the likes on social media. You're doing it because you hope that by doing the work and being this example, we can all collectively rise up a little bit. Uh, it's almost like your own personal way of contributing to the evolution of human consciousness. Okay, that sounds like a big deal. That sounds really abstract, really kind of a lofty thing. But I feel like that's part of your integrity. And you just feel like if you're the best person that you can be, and again, we all make mistakes. The emperor is not perfect. The emperor can sometimes be too demanding, too tyrannical even too much in the ego about things, too confident in their own abilities, right? So we temper that. We have to temper that with some water energy, okay? And with the water energy, there's not really a lot of it, okay? So I'm feeling like we're getting into that mode, at least we're kind of starting on that road where we need a little bit of water to temper this fiery energy, right? This emperor. Again, it's not gender specific. This is that assertive, confident energy that we're talking about. And this is that um, striving to be the example, to always put your best effort forward. And just by living your truth, by, by walking your talk, so to speak, other people will notice, they will see you, and they will in some way be a little bit better for it, right? But I don't think that's coming from a selfish place. I don't think you're walking around, uh, you know, acting like, like you're the bee's knees. And, um, you know, that everybody just by looking at you or being in your presence is somehow better off for it, right? That sounds pretty terrible, honestly. I don't think that's it for you at all. I think yours comes from a deeper, truer, more authentic place 
especially with that priestess card, that it is primarily your inner work, your task, your intention, right? You're always looking to improve and to grow and to do better and be better in every aspect of your life, physical, mental, emotional, spiritually as a whole. Um, you know, I, I wonder if you have some sort of a religious or spiritual practice. It feels to me like you don't in an overt way. It feels like your spiritual practice is a little bit more subtle than that. It could be something like, um, like music. It could be something like martial arts. It's something that has a tactical or auditory or physical, you know, with the impressions. It's some, some activity in the external world. Something that is not like doing a prayer or doing, you know, an, let's say an official ritual. It is more about the activity in which, so music, sports, you know, there's all sorts of things. Um, any kind of art or, you know, whatever. Something tactile or something to do with the impressions, the physical impressions. That is where you immerse yourself and that is religion for you right? Not that, you know, baseball is my religion. Not that. That's not what I mean. Okay. Uh, but I mean, immersing yourself in something like that, that your entire body gets involved, your entire heart, your emotions, your mind, everything. It's all inclusive, right? It's, it's a holistic experience for you. It could be anything. It could be cooking, for example. Um, and that's part of this fool energy too, where it's just that, that activity, that religious experience for you may change. It may change every day. Um, it could be that anything you find yourself doing, that's where you, you put your entire being into it, right? You become fully present, mind, body, and soul into whatever you're doing. That's the religion for you. That's spirituality for you, you know? The next card that we see is this wonderful star energy, okay? Um, I'm feeling like there's an H name here somewhere, and I feel like it might be a water sign person, or it could be an air sign person. We've got some water, and then we've got this Aquarius, the star card. That's an air sign, so it could be an air or a water sign person, but I feel like they're, your, they're the one person that you really want to um, have notice you. It's almost like you really, you want this person to recognize you, okay? And I don't think this is like um, the supervisor, the boss, or anything. I feel like almost, I'm going to say something kind of abstract here, a little bit too mystical maybe. But I feel like this is almost your personal god, goddess, deity, your own guardian angel or spirit guide or something that you're trying to get their attention, kind of. I almost feel like you're trying to make contact with that higher mind, that higher soul, your true self, or whatever whatever name we give that, that energy, right? So in a kind of a mystical and abstract way, I feel like you're trying to make contact with that, with whatever this kind of higher mystery of the universe is, okay? Uh, with divinity, let's say. Uh, but I feel on a more practical level, in a kind of a more mundane sense, I guess, bring it down to earth a little bit. I feel like you're trying to get one particular person's uh, attention. Now, this could be your significant other. It could be someone in the workplace or in the family, a friend. Maybe this is someone, I feel like it's someone that you do look up to, right? So we look up far enough, we get the, the abstract, the divinity, right? That you're trying to get the attention of God, goddess, deity. But on a practical level, this is someone in your environment that you're, you, you look up to. You're trying to get their intention, their, their attention, right? Um, so I don't know if this is, if this is a significant other, this could, I mean, it doesn't quite feel like a parent though. It has a little bit of that parental vibe because there's this, this water element to it. Now it could just be that they're a water sign, but I feel like there's some kind of emotional something there. There's like a, a body of water that's kind of uh, surrounding the two of you. And it's just, it's just like you're trying to, you're trying to wave at them and they don't quite see you yet. I don't know what that's about. Could be an H named person. They could be an air or a water sign person. 
uh, but it's someone that you're trying to get you're trying to get their attention you're trying to like signal them or communicate to them i don't know who that person is but there's all of this water around the two of you so there's it's some there's some kind of an emotional or spiritual um not obstacle, but there's some kind of emotional or spiritual distance between the two of you. Okay, let's move to the next card now. Because um, we, we talked about these. The star card, that's in the environment. I think this is the, a person in your environment. This is also your kind of aspiration to reach that the spiritual level with things, right? And you know, we talked about all of that. And then we have the water sign person. Uh, this is the Knight of Cups, if I didn't mention that. And that one's in the position of your fears, worries, and concerns. So it's almost like you fear that there's too much distance or you fear or you're trying to get their attention, but they don't see you, right? I don't know who that is. Uh, the next card is the universe or world card. So something is, there's, there's an end state that there's something you're trying to accomplish, first of all. But it's, there's that delay. There's something causing this delay. And again, it could just be on the physical plane. You have these goals, these objectives, these, you know, the plan, the targets that you're trying to hit in your business, in your personal life, in your employment, whatever. And the the problem is with the seven of pentacles, it's causing a delay. So the kind of end date, this deadline that you have, or this kind of completion of this project is delayed because there was this error mistake whatever this malfunction, right? Whatever that is, is causing the delay. But I feel like this, this is meaning something more. I think that this is really talking about the delay with this person over here, because this is on the path of the serpent, right? So it's, it's connected to the path of the dove, but it's kind of a different flow. It's a different series of cards. It's a different um, flow of energy, okay? Um, I feel like something going on with this maybe H name person, the water or air sign person. The uh, conclusion of this relationship, not maybe not the maybe not the conclusion, maybe the consummation, honestly. Maybe the fine, the the end result, whatever the goal is with that person, if it's for the two of you to um, to bond, to unite, to become close, to have the intimacy, or to whatever it is, whatever the goal is with that person, okay? I feel like there's a delay here. Okay, I feel like you have an idea of what you want that relationship, whatever that is, what you want that to look like. But there's a delay there as well. As well. So it's interesting that we kind of have an overlap of the practical business side of things, where there's an end goal, there's this delay, and you're trying to work it out, and you've got all of these supportive energies within you, right? Then it feels like on a more spiritual or emotional level, there's also this kind of goal that you have in mind, this end state you're trying to reach, but there's some delay. There was some malfunction, some error, some mistake that was made that is causing a delay, okay? could be literally two separate scenarios. It could be that somehow these are the same situations. Okay, I don't know how much overlap there is. Um, this mystery card though, I'm expecting this to be some more water energy. I feel like there's um, an emotional component that we're not really seeing right now because of this star energy. And then we go right into that nine of cups. I mean, the knight of cups, excuse me. Um, and then into this delay, this, we have this goal, but we're not able to reach it. Okay. So there's some emotional stuff going on, you know, um, I don't know if this is going to be maybe a five of cups, maybe, um, maybe a two of cups to show the nature of that relationship. Let's find out what this is, but I, I definitely feel there's some kind of, there's some kind of movement in the water area here. There's something going on that we really need. Yeah, five of cups. So this situation over here, it, it might be the same situation. I honestly, I don't know. Okay. Um, but there is this, there is this uh, emotional upset kind of thing. I don't, I don't like you to use the word upset because there's, 
the emotions are moving, right? The waters are kind of churning. And I feel like I said before, I feel like you're kind of both in the water and you're trying to kind of wave and get their attention, right? So you're causing some splashes. You're causing some waves in the water, right? So I don't know who this person is that you're trying to get their attention, but I feel like it's causing some kind of, um, some kind of turmoil, some kind of movement, or just getting things stirred up, getting the emotions stirred up, you know? Um, it's almost like maybe this person was an ex, maybe this person is already in a relationship. Um, maybe this Five of Cups is talking about your energy and your, your um, maybe a little bit of, of disappointment or sadness that you're unable to progress with whatever this relationship is right? Um, that you're unable to get this person's attention or to reach the goal that you have. Okay, so this is causing some kind of an upset, upset. And I think that's why we don't see any water over here, because the water really is all about the path of the serpent. And it's almost like what's going on in the workplace or whatever, whatever this seven of pentacles is on the mundane, the physical plane, I feel like that's kind of like a metaphor for what's going on within you on the emotional plane. Does that make sense? We'll take a look at this a little bit more in the extended. Um, but I think, I think that the, the idea is to continue with the major arcana that we see here, this fool energy, this priestess energy, um, allow yourself to just, uh, be natural, be spontaneous, just flow with the situation. Because I think when you rely on that, like like we said on the path of the dove, it just seems like you're able to roll with things in such a way where you come out looking like the hero. Like everything is just, is just wonderful at the other end of it, right? So I think you need to fall back on some of these, um, on this inner work that you've been doing. And again, I don't know too much about this situation with this air or water sign, this H name person possibly. Uh, we'll see if the extended gives us anything and maybe next week's reading can see some of this clear up a little bit. Okay. If you want to become a member to the channel, click on the link that's right here. That's how you join the channel. Then you'll have access to everything. Okay. This was your uh, weekly tarot reading for February 26th through March 4th on Dove and Serpent Tarot.